Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Welcome to part two in our conversation with Neil from Gorilla Gorilla. He has plenty more to say and to talk about, so without much further ado, here's Neil. What are you drinking tonight? Oh, hello. So um, I, I've gone a bit more, I don't like to use the word normal, but like standard compared to like different IPAs and stuff. So um, I've already got through my coffee because everyone knows, and Chris mentioned it the other day when we were talking to him. I had yeah. my Irish coffee, uh, well, I call it Irish coffee, but I had salted caramel Irish cream in it from Tesco. Okay, it was on offer. It was more than half price. Bottles normally £15. It was four and a half pound. Four pounds. Who's that? Four pound fifty for normal people. <laughs> yeah. Four and a half. Mention or imperial, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. So um, put that in it. Gorgeous. And then I've quietly had two Cronenberg. That is the only beer, weirdly enough, that if I have a pint of, I get about a third of the way down the pint, I will get a migraine straight away. Really? Can't drink really? it. It is. It, I can. I, I can have. I can go out and drink um, certain beers. It'll give me a headache. And what annoys me is people go, it's the chemicals they put in it. Do you understand beer? Yeah. It consists of like four things. <laughs> None of them are chemicals. But I don't know what it is, but Cronenberg 1664 gives me a headache um, before I'm even like, back in the day, you used to have the pint glass with the, with, with the bubble in the side of your hands. Go, By the time I got to the bubble, I would have a, a proper full-on headache. So I would give it a week, wow. go back and test that theory. And it turned out that that was happening. Yeah, um, I've drank weaker beers and had awful headaches off it. Yeah, I've gone out and drank stronger beers and I've not had a headache from it. So for argument's sake, I, uh, I've drunk things like um, Stella and I've not had a headache. But the 3.4 to sort of 4.2 beers, which is the standard um, sort of like pub fare throughout the whole of the UK, yeah. will give me a headache. So I walk into most pubs and I look at some people say, why don't you drink as often as everyone else? And it's like, because I get to the standard beers and I'm like, I can't do it. Just give me a headache. I'll have a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Funny you know, enough, like, like, I have the same problem with absinthe. I don't know what it is with absinthe, but it just gives me a headache <laughs> straight away. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I've got stories to say about absinthe, but not on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty much along the lines of I know what you did last summer. Uh, <laughs> that, that <laughs> bad night out. Uh, what, anyway, are you yeah, what are you drinking? Yeah, what what are you drinking? Uh, so tonight, um, I've I've gone for the uh, the Angus uh, Temple Rum. What? This is not a thing I'm aware of. Oh, what? So, do you guys do rum in any way whatsoever? Yes, I do. Right. So, not me personally, but I'd, I'd have a go. Right. So imagine <laughs> some some rums out there um, are harsh and a bit nasty. Yeah. So they did the spice rum. So you get the likes of Kraken, which are a bit vanilla. So Angsonoik did the Temple rum. And I'm telling you now, is when you have a sip of it, you get an initial flavour, which is quite pleasant at first. And they call it a sipping rum. And it literally is rum with an ice cube in, no, nothing else. Um after like a minute, you get like a, almost like a slightly chilly hit. You get all these various flavours. And I'm telling you now, it goes well with barbecue. In fact, I'm going to send you guys a bottle of it. Oh, that is yes, please. how confident I am. Yeah, go for it. I'll send you guys a bottle of it and you try it out. And if, if you say you don't like it, then hell will freeze over. So <laughs> like, I, I, I'm more of a whiskey guy, but I haven't necessarily found that rum that I like just with like ice by itself. Although so, close, very close. Have you had revolver rum? Yes, I have. I quite like revolver. This, this takes it outside, kicks seven stages of shit out of it and brings the corpse Ooh, back in. Oh, hello. That's a bold oh, statement. That that's, is. that's a claim. Yeah. That's confidence, boys. That's confidence. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm... Um, as far as Scotch goes, I'm not a huge fan, but I have been to the Isle of Jura and I've been Ooh. to the Isle of Jura distillery and I enjoyed some of the stuff I drank there. But I'm a bourbon guy. Yeah. I like I like a good bourbon all day long. Um, but 
when Angus Oink, when they made me an ambassador, they sent a bottle of Temple Rum in. And um, I opened it up. I think it was Christmas Day. I opened it up. And I thought, right, I'll save this for like a, a, a nice occasion. And it was one of those things where, you know, your day just turns perfect. You've got a vibe. You're cooking. The kids in the in the living room, she's watching awesome stuff on the TV. Her feet are up in the air. She's colouring in a book. Your food's coming out well. You're sitting there, and it's like you are in control. Everything is ready. Everything is on time. Nothing is burned. Everything is cooked well. You're sitting there thinking, I'm having a damn good bloody day here. Relax. And I've got a drink. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and it was just amazing. And it, it was one of those Christmas days that just stuck in my head. It was like, wow, it's like, have I forgotten something? You open the microwave twice, it's like, no, there's no peas in there. You know, you open the oven, it's like, everything's in there. You think, and then you put, you put the dinner down and, and we, we sat there eating and it was just like the most perfect Christmas day ever. And I, I, to me, it was like, it was one of those vibes. So basically the, the temple run in my head just basically was just like, became a, a Christmas day tradition for me then. Um, but you mentioned bourbon then, and we'll move back onto food in a second. And I haven't forgot yeah. the fact I was going to talk about resting a bit either. Um, oh, yeah. for, for me, one of my favourite bourbons is Buffalo Trace. Such yes. a great whiskey. To me, um, Buffalo Trace is like, is you can't go wrong with it. But then I went from there to Maker's Mark, which is another nice bourbon. I prefer Buffalo Trace to Maker's Mark, but personally. Buffalo, Buffalo Trace has got a nice thing. But then I discovered Bullet Bourbon, yeah, which was okay, until I discovered... There's a bullet bird rye. with a green green label, the rye. Yes, that is a the very rye. good whiskey. Back back in a second. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was in I was in Tesco the other day and I came across now it's not a fantastic looking bowl, but it's this stuff. Ooh. And it is Sazerac rye straight rye whiskey. And I was like, damn. Now, as far as I'm concerned. Like you mentioned IPA before, I'm kind of IPA'd out. Um, I do like the, the Angus and Oink Easy Life, uh, the New Life and the Love Life, because they're like a, a different IPA. But a standard, bog standard IPA that every other person does turns me a bit ick. Uh, it's got that, that, that crick factor. Yet yeah, you get things like my uh, Tiny Rebel. Yeah, you know, you get all their IPAs. They're, 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 I've not drank a bad Tiny Rebel beer. Um, I've had the Angus. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I love Tiny Rebel. My dad literally lives about a three-minute drive from uh, their their uh, distillery. If you've never been there, it's worth the trip. You can spend a day there easy. Apparently, apparently they, they do tours for like seventy quid. So you go to do the tour and you get beers and, and I blah, would, blah, blah, personally, blah, blah. I wouldn't even do that because they have probably about 40 different beers just on the bar there so they have a lot yeah. of the stuff that's now discontinued that's on tap and they also have pretty much every single can of what they've done turn up there on like a six nations day particularly on the day where there's three different matches they're all yeah. on you've got the bar the whole time you normally have to pre-book it trust me this, you'll have a more this enjoyable sounds like a time date, boys yeah this sounds like a date <laughs> a more enjoyable time <laughs> if you go on that tour don't get me wrong the tour is good but that is going to be a better day for you and the food there's phenomenal as well absolutely right. phenomenal sort it out it's on <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'm, I'm you there. Down there. <laughs> um, before i forget well, resting resting before i forget yes. so we had boss hogs on Series two, oh, and I think it was yeah. quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. And um, awesome Ro Rob talked to us about this thing that I looked at afterwards. So, in America, a lot of their like briskets and things they'll rest for like anywhere between 12 and 24 hours, but they'll put it in like a heating rack so it keeps it at about I think it's about 50 degrees Celsius, wasn't it? 50, 50 degrees yeah. sounds about right, yeah, yeah. So, um, well. Uh, Christmas around Christmas sort of time like last year Owen and I did some cooking at his and we wanted to rest something and we put it in his oven and we kept it at the 50 degrees and yeah you just you just forget about it and that that's if your oven will so, so basically what I say not to all do is, right not all do no so <laughs> what I'll say to people is is um just just for, for the hell of it right I've got a, a Thermoworks smoke which is my first um barbecue sort of like a thermometer and 
you've got your rubber gasket on your cooker. So put the grill uh, springy bullshit thing on the grill, put your probe in, and turn your oven just basically as it goes click and you hear the element chime in and see what your dial says compared to what your actual calibrated thermometer reads. Now, really? my thing said, my thing said um, something like 80 degrees on the thermometer. When I actually read it, it was more like 100. So it was you need reading to be careful wrong. Then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I realised then that if it says 160, now you go 140, and that thing that that thing burned a lot of food. I, I I did test my indoor oven. The best thing I ever had for telling me when something was cooked was my dog. Bless her, she's gone now. <laughs> but she would come into the living room and she'd just go, look at me, do this little dance and wag her tail. I'm like, what was that about? I go in and open the oven and the food was cooked perfectly. The day that dog passed away, I burned everything. <laughs> that, 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 that dog was like one of those sniffer dogs you see at the airport. It's like, yeah, there's cocaine in here. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, ready. <laughs> she was absolutely awesome. But I, I, I basically decided to check my oven and realised is it was wildly out, worse than a barbecue thermometer. Mm. You get this barbecue thermometer to say smoking grilling yeah. searing is like, oh what a whatever you know i mean a, a good thermometer all day long will tell you the truth you know and um yeah. you can yeah, so you can calibrate them as well that's a very good point you can calibrate yeah. your uh barbecue thermometers a lot of people don't know this so if you actually well, take thing... it out you there's like a yeah. switch on it so boil water put it in boiling yeah. water and make sure it's 100 celsius great exactly so, so it's the first thing i do when i when i get a barbecue before i do anything else Thermometer and do the nut off the back, boil a kettle or a boiling pan of water, double check it with my thermo pen, pop the actual end of the probe in and get it through and adjust accordingly. Um, but I still don't trust them because basically it's when you're outside, especially in the Welsh weather, you've got various fluctuations. So whatever you, a probe you've got in there will give you a, a more accurate reading, but you will guarantee that you've got to adjust something in there. Um, the other thing I do as well when I get a barbecue before I've even cooked on it I will go and get a roll of like lava lock um, gasket sealant whether it's a kettle or anything like that a brand new kettle clean the edges of the kettle off with an isopropyl alcohol run the gasket around so that when you put the lid on the gasket forms a good seal so you're not escaping any smoke any heat anything like that mm -hmm. so basically it's calibrate gasket seal that's my first port of call for any new barbecue equipment straight away without yeah. fail. Whether it says tell true on the gauge or not, I will test it out. <laughs> the other thing I'll do as well. That's is, our fourth guest uh, for the thing. <laughs> if I'm resting steak, I'll yeah. always put a knob of butter on it. Uh, yeah. I mean, always. You know, I always do. You, you, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, um, Steak, steak is one of those things is, is a lot of people get wrong a lot of the time and you get these people you know uh, what am I hate oh there's blood on that oh it's not blood no it's not okay. blood it's not blood at all um, and I had uh, my ex she was she was like yeah that's a bit pink and it's like I'm, I'm talking blancmange pink I'm not talking like I've just fallen over and grazed my elbow pink it's like blancmange pink that's a bit pink and it's like Honestly, this is beyond where I'd like to take a steak. I remember her cooking me a meal and we did steak, mushrooms, blah, 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 the kitchen. And honestly, it was like eight minutes aside on the steak. And it came through and I was sitting there hacksawing away with a steak knife and two of this stuff. And honestly, it was like, <laughs> you know, when you're a kid and you do things like you eat paper because you're a stupid kid yeah. on my bit. It was like eating corrugated cardboard. And I was like, mm, uh, nice. Oh, my. And I realised then, it, well, I, I call it grey steak. And I realised that we've been eating steak wrong all my life. And we harken back to the days where I'm at Bodderscaffron Hall. I've got awesome peppercorn sauce, free steaks. And I'm like, why the hell am I doing this? And I still, to this day, when I cook a steak, even if it's in the kitchen, 
I go back to that time when it's like eight minutes aside, it was like 16 minutes to cook a steak. I mean, dear God, no. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's, um, it's one of those things in, when they say like you can actually feel the steak, you can actually put your finger on it and tell how yes. far it's gone. And, um, I always think is if you're, if you're sitting there and you're touching the steak, you're thinking that's a bit done. You've already gone too far. Get it off. Yeah. Get it on the plate. Insulate it. Let it do its thing. And it'll be too far. But I, I do not. I, I, funny enough, one Father's Day, I think it was about two years ago, I got bought a set of Tremonti steak knives for Father's Day. I've never got them out of the box because my bog <laughs> standard knife in my kitchen is enough to cut a steak. If you've got to hack it, yeah, your if it's done steak, properly, yeah. Yeah, if it's done properly, you use a butter butt knife, steak. right? Exactly, yeah. I mean, hell, give me a spoon. You know, if you can cut a steak with a spoon, you're doing all right. You know, you're not doing yeah. wrong. So as far as I'm concerned, it's like, you know, you, you shouldn't need a steak knife to cut a steak. But that's a, a no, big, you know, bullshit thing from the 70s, you know. They used to yeah, um, occasionally in some restaurants use spoons, didn't they? To prove how well cooked it was so they didn't have to use knives. Exactly. I mean, if you can cut a steak with a spoon, I mean, the, the, other, the other thing I say to people there as well is, is um, not everyone's got access to some like really great butchers and great steaks and what have you. And you can go to like, various supermarkets. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of Aldi supplying you with the bare minimum that you can get away with as far as good steaks go. And I say is, is understanding the meat that you've got in the first place is the beginning of your journey to how that cook's going to turn out. So I will not buy a steak that is basically pure red meat. I want intramuscular fat. Mm -hmm. I want marbling. And I will sit there. And even if it's got a big, massive fat cap on the back, I will start by cooking the fat cap on the grill, then turn it over onto its back and side. You've got to treat them all individually. They're almost like... In, you'll never cook the same steak twice unless you are cooking a yeah. shitload of steak. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's understanding what you've got and is 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 don't try and, and and go too far with with what you've got. So if you've got a steak about that thick, then then don't be cooking it too long. Get a nice sear on the go, give it a few flips, get it done, get it eaten, enjoy it. Don't go mad with things and don't expect the same results with the same method on the same on, on different pieces of meat you've got to adapt yourself and you can't learn that unless you're going out there and cooking five days a week buying different cuts of meat and practicing with i don't know four or five quid cuts mm -hmm. you've got to sort of learn your craft as it were before you can start tackling I don't know, Australian A5 Wagyu or whatever. Probably got that wrong. Don't care. Don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, you, you've got to learn these things. But if you do get yourself a good butcher, that's where your craft of messing around with these cheaper cuts pays off and you get a better cut and you sit there and you are in eye-rolling heaven. And that's what it's Definitely. all about, isn't it? Yeah, the day. absolutely. So you I know. suppose learn, learning your craft, you've already mentioned yeah. one one uh, barbecue fail but is there is there another one you, you, you'd like to share with us uh right i'll get my notes out um yes that's what we I like think to you're see the i think you're the first person that's come prepared with an actual a4 piece of paper <laughs> oh it's not, it's not only an a4 paper it is literally many sides <laughs> uh, <laughs> you run through it you run through it oh the pastrami oh my god right so uh Scott from uh, Angus and Oink, I've, I've got his phone number. So I phoned him and I said, mate, I've got the pastrami kit. He's like, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do that. I was like, right, follow it to the letter. So I get the meat out and it's backpacked and it's pastrami. This thing is like beetroot coloured. Massaging it every other day. I'm yeah. <laughs> folding it over. I'm giving it all this to the elbows. On it. I'm like, it is beautiful. Right? I put it on the grill. I start smoking it. I get to about 170 degrees. And I'm like, yeah, we're, we're in the end game now. Oh, you know when you watch David Attenborough and there's like lava coming out of Hawaii. And there's this huge, <laughs> brittle, snapping, cracking pumice stone and lava. And, and, <laughs> and, yeah, I, I'd, I'd made that on the grill. What I should have done. <laughs> 
at 170 degrees is stop. Because what I'd, what I'd done was I'd chosen a bit of brisket that I got, and I cut it off, and it was lean as hell. Right. Now, straight away, you know, straight away, that was the moment where he realised he fucked up. Right? <laughs> so it was lean. There was no fat. And I'd gone to 170 degrees, which is about your limit before you've got to do something else with it. You get the Montreal method. You stay, take it off at 170 and you steam it in moisture. I didn't. I carried on to 203, 204, and what I produced was like glass. I glassed <laughs> a piece of pastrami <laughs> brisket. I mean, it, 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 oh, it was bad. But in my saving grace, I made a chili con carne, and we all know in the slow cooker, a brisket in a chili con carne is epic. A brisket, pastrami, chili con carne is next effing level. It was <laughs> awesome. So but from I a fail, Rose, child, Rose, Rose, yeah, yeah. Rose gloriousness, but... It was like a man. phoenix. <laughs> yeah, it was like a phoenix, but... It was like overnight in there to basically to make. Uh, it was the point was when you eat something, it actually takes your gums off your teeth. It's like, oh, <laughs> I didn't see my dentist. This is that bad. Uh, that that was one barbecue <laughs> fail. Um, what else have we got on here? Uh, the probe in the food as well. That was the other one. I, I, I pierced the wrap. Uh, all the brisket as well. You know, walking across the garden and pouring out. <laughs> The liquor, liquor straight yes. to the trainer. Yeah, that's brilliant. The other barbecue failed. So basically, when I first started, I bought a Kadai. So basically, I, I, I've never owned a Weber. I've not owned anything. I bought a Kadai Fireball. I've and always wanted one. I've always wanted one. Brave. Mm, guys, guys, you've got to get one. I'd you've love got to one. get one. So I bought, I bought the big one. Uh, so basically, it's, it's me and my child go to Santa Pod each year. We watch the drag cars. I drink beer. She gets off her head on blue slushies, and we have a great time. <laughs> and lockdown comes along, and I've got money saved up for that, but we're not going. And she goes, Daddy, can we buy a fireball for the garden? I'm yes, like, done. <laughs> What's a fireball? And she goes, it's like this thing, and it's like off Game of Thrones. Right, so you're six years of age, <laughs> What the hell do you know what Game of Thrones is all about? Because Dad knows what Game of Thrones is all about, and it's basically tits, beer, and death. Why the hell does my eight-year-old or six-year-old at the time know about Game of Thrones? And I was like, right, tell me more. And she goes, it's like, it's like Game of Thrones style cauldron. I'm sold. So I go Google, Shropshire, Kadai Fireballs, blah, 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 and I order one. The car they turns up and they said, we'll promise you for the bank holiday Monday. I'm like, cool. It actually turns up on the bank holiday Monday. I'm like, yes. I set up in the garden. I dump a bag of charcoal in there. I set fire to it. And I put a load of food on the outside. I don't know if you guys know, I live in North Wales. We have an abundance of seagulls. <laughs> so I come from the garden. I come indoors. When I come outside, I'm like, I'm 30% done on food here. <laughs> nah, whatever. So I carry on. It's only when I turn around one day and I realised the, 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 as we call them, the chip eagles were flying down off the, off the uh, thing of landing on my cad eye, picking up some scran and taking off with it. So, uh, yeah, so basically, I, I have a child out there with a shovel waving the seagulls away. <laughs> <laughs> on a side note, I called them chip eagles, and my child misheard me. And during lockdown, there were no um, no tourists in Conway, but there were a handful of tourists that maybe have got caught here when they came mm. over. So we're walking down the centre of Conway, which is a cobbled street, which goes down towards the quay. And my child is walking with me, and somebody had dropped something on the floor. And these seagulls came down and basically started, like, squabbling over it. And my daughter bless her, she's like six or seven years of age, stamps her feet and yells, go away you shit eagles! <laughs> <laughs> no! Chip eagles! And I, I looked around and there's all these tourists absolutely killing themselves laughing. I'm like, 
Oh, <laughs> this is not a proud dad moment in any way whatsoever. But she proper stamped her foot and yelled at them as well. And she <laughs> meant it. <laughs> <laughs> If you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as a numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk. Um, d- does uh, she get involved with cooking much on on the barbecues? You've oh, talked about her scaring off, off the chip eagles, but like, did she get involved? So, so basically, is when I was coming indoors, I was like, keep turning that. If that starts sizzling, turn it over, and the bit that doesn't look so good, put that down towards the heat. If it's going a bit dark, move it towards one side, direct and indirect. Man, she nailed it. I I, I could be gone for twenty minutes. I could be out there making a coleslaw, making um, a jack of potatoes to throw in the pit, go back outside. I, I'd i look at the stuff and it's like, no complaint, zero complaint whatsoever. You have nailed this kid. She's even got an account called Little Wells Griller, but it's not that updated. She has got this penchant for hot dogs. Yeah. Like, All oh, children do. On. All children yeah, do. She, she loves them, but she has now gravitated on towards other things. Like uh, the other night, I don't know if you saw the video, but I got the um, the air fryer. Yes, she, she, I did see, this, see that. This got me, right? So she comes in the kitchen and goes, Daddy, I want a burger, but I don't want what you're having on it. I want what I'm having on it. I was like, yeah, okay, all day long. You, you customise it. What do you want? And she goes, she goes, I'll be back in a minute. She just goes out to the rub supply in the, in the corridor. She goes back with tandoori gold. And she goes, I want that as a sauce on my burger. I was like, <laughs> as a sauce? Okay. And without a pause of <clears throat> thought, I just went, pan, tandoori gold, tomato ketchup, <laughs> in. Picked up Red House <laughs> on there. A little bit of water. Bang on the heat, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. Stir, 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 stir. It created the sauce. I poured it into a bowl. Her burger came out with a panko on the outside and the Anglosonic rub on it, which is a bit of tandoori as well. I dropped it in the sauce, tossed it around, threw it in a burger, sat down. She started eating it. I got my phone out. I went, what do you reckon? And that was the review, the honest, straight-up review. When she leans she back and she goes, then. it's the greatest thing she's ever had. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, woohoo! And that was her suggestion. That was not mine. That's her flavour profile. Yeah, that's what a palette. That, that, that's, that's a pr- I was going to say, that's a proud dad moment. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I was like, but I, I'll tell you what, man, I put a fang on that burger and I was like, I regret making the hell of nasty burger, which was good. <laughs> but I'm like, her burger was better than mine. It's always the case, isn't it? You know, <laughs> someone else food and you try theirs, you think, oh man, I wish I'd ordered that. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, oh man. You know, it, that was awesome. So I, I'm like, wow. But I'm not going to push her. She she develops her own thing. She does her own thing and what have you. I mean, um, on her birthday, uh, it was it was quite heartbreaking, really. It's like uh, during lockdown, Mm-hmm. We had the Kadai, and her birthday the year before was she was the princess. Everyone came to a birthday party, everyone bought a presents, everyone was like amazing. It was great. I daddy danced with her, her mum danced with her. We had a great time. A year later, we are sat in my back garden. It's just me, her, and my dad, and a Kadai. And I apologized to her, and I said, Aww. Darling, I'm really sorry. 
that this isn't the birthday. And she went, no, Daddy, this birthday's awesome. And she picked up some tongs and started turning chicken over. And she had a little uh, sound box and she was playing Hawaiian theme tunes, like little ukulele things. And you know what? It was a perfect, tiny little moment. And I value that moment more than the moment the year before when she was the star of the show and she's wearing a princess dress or what have you. And still to this day, I come across those pictures and I still get that welling up of like proud dad moment where she, she, she is so forgiving, she is so accepting, and she makes the best of a bad situation, even if there are shit eagles dropping down <laughs> in the streets, picking <laughs> tips. <laughs> Amazing. So I, think we should, um, I think we should go on to our next sort of favourite part of the show where we, we, we do the barbecue bingo. We've been oh. talking about ingredients and your daughter and choosing her own ingredients, so it yeah. seems a good place to bring this in. So... Okay. Um, obviously, we've, uh, as I've just mentioned, we kind of made a, a, a slight update where uh, we've just spoken to our last recording was with Chris from Big Nose Barbecue. He's left oh, yeah. an, ingre- an, an ingredient to come onto the list. Um, Let me guess. We're going to spin the wheel. Let me guess. Oh, we start the screen sharing. Right. Let me guess. Has Chris left something Lebanese on there? Will you tell us, and if you can see it, what you think Chris left on yeah. there for you? Oh, you mate, I, I cannot see that. That is like oh, I've got I've glasses shamed you. That's what I've done there. No, 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 I, I can't do it. <laughs> All right, well, I'll read you some, and you tell me where you say stop when you think I've said the thing that Chris has put on there. Oily no. fish, beef no. shin, no. whiskey, no aubergine. Maybe. Sumac. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> was I right? And yeah, yeah, you were. Just, yeah, you, were. you were. You were absolutely right. And just it just so happens, and by the time this comes out, uh, that episode would have would have aired. And also before that, we'd spoken to David at Spice Punch and Maple right. and Pecan Ice Cream. Is is another one that that, that was kind of on there from from him? Yes, that's what you'll have to listen. You'll have to listen. You'll have to listen to the episode. To, it all makes sense. But oh. it's, it's maple so, and pecan ice cream. What would you do hell, with that? Hell, um, put it in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I like so it. That's a, that's a good answer. <laughs> um, Man, okay, so what I, we'll I, do I, is I mean, I mean, spice spice bread never fails to amaze. Chris oh, as well. Uh, Chris, Chris is um, yeah, you know, he's all about the Lebanese food and what have you. But then he will just sit there and go out in his garden and, and just do a, a, a drum of food and what have you. And it's like, but they are guys I'll be happy to spend social time with all day long. So what we have you got this week, yeah, Leonardo? Yeah. I, I can't read it. It's, it's like tiny. <laughs> Uh, do you want me to go through other bits and pieces? So we have like on. M- mint on there. There's duck on there. There's a sweet, nice. sweet pastry dish. Okay. Uh, leg of lamb. Curry. Oh, carrots. Carrots, yeah. Or as, we like, as us Welsh like to call them, moron. <laughs> moron? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, there's also my signature yeah. dish, right? So every, so basically, if it lands on my signature dish, we'd like you yeah. to cook what you're famous for. Yeah. So what would be your signature dish? Um, I, I like a good Moroccan cook-up. So there'd be some good lamb in there. There'd be some couscous, some quinoa. There'd be some mint. There'd be some pomegranate, uh, chickpeas in there, maybe pine nuts as well, and lamb just banged on the top. But I am a big, big proponent of a good beef sortie. You me, you me go for I love a beef shorty. So would yeah, it be would it be so... Moroccan or would it be beef shorty? Oh uh, no, you've done me there. I I I, I can't it's like can I have both? <laughs> hey, if you want to do well, both, do we're not both. gonna moan. Yeah, we're not gonna moan if you did so both. So obviously what what we'd like you to do is that if if whatever it lands on, we'd love you to cook, make that dish for us, tag us in on our socials and we'll we'll share that. Okay. So I'm going to spin. I'm going to spin it in a second. But after okay. that, we would like you to leave 
something to go onto the list for the next guest. <laughs> you already know what I'm going to pick there. I'm pretty so, sure. What, I know <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure as well. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give it a spin now and let's see what it comes out. Okay. Then. Ooh, I mean, the suspense. Uh, I'm really hoping for the ice cream because. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> Carrots. <laughs> cut, cut the morons. Cut, so, cut. Huh. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I could do something with that quite easily. You do anything with carrots, so it doesn't have to be the main thing. It could be using it as like a, a, a flavor profile somewhere. You can be having it as a side dish. You could make a sauce out of it and serve it with something. Do you want me to say what I'm going to do right away? Uh, you don't have Very to, correct. but you can if you know it. If you know it. I can do. Right. So if you want to make an absolutely great big massive curry, um, one of the curries from Angus Lonick is the Gosh curry. And what I do is I literally grate a whole bag of carrots and put them in a cast iron pot with passata and the gosh curry and whatever meat is on the top. And I boil that down. The carrots virtually disappear. Oh. And they become the bulk yeah. of the whole thing. So I am going to go with that. I will take carrots and I will run with the ball and I will score a goddamn touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> right. It sounds amazing. So can you also remind us what ingredient or dish that you're going to add to this list? I'm going to add it right now. Uh, I would say a little bit of heat. So maybe mace. Wow. Now, people don't understand mace. Now mace is like a little bit of ginger, a little bit of chili, a little bit of cumin, but all in one flavour. So I think mace would absolutely knock up flavour straight up. What I love is Owen and I were both going. He's he's, he's going to say um he's going to say liver. Liver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the the ingredient that you want me to hey oh, no, to the people. We're going with mace now. Don't yes. you worry. <laughs> well, unless you I, want to sorry, put I liver in you... there. <laughs> yeah. So, so oh, oh no, sorry, I, I've got a cross. But I thought you meant elevate the dish that I was doing. No. Uh, the dish, yeah. So the dish I would like to add to this list is definitely liver. That liver. is like I... that is like public enemy number one, as far as I'm concerned. What what a tip though for people because no one really cooks with mace. I can't even remember anyone talking about it since I did catering GCSE. But but, but mace is is like um, you can do like Christmas stuff with it. You mm. can do other things yeah. with it. It, it. It's got that warming sort of like it it works with things like pumpkin butternut squash it works with carrots it works with root veg it works with lamb not so great with like chicken and beef and things like that but it's got that autumnal staple sort of vibe to the whole thing so that's where mace i, I would add to that carrot dish that i was on about but adding to the 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 barbecue bingo I'm definitely going to put liver on there. I would like to see somebody <laughs> squirming on the prongs of liver. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's on the list, so that's there for uh, for our next uh, next episode. So uh, you'll Excellent. have to keep an eye out to see who get who gets that. Excellent. So people if, are, people are going to actually be cursing me, going, "That son of a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the good thing is, though, uh, whoever we interview next, if they don't get it. It could be a guest in 10 episodes time, for example, that might get it. it so uh, it yeah, may we'll, never we'll just happen. keep it on there. It may never happen. It could be like carrots, 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 <laughs> and what have you. No, I've taken it off. Carrots is now off the list. So we always, oh, okay. we always take whatever, whatever comes up, we take off and we replace with yeah. something new. So uh, to make sure that no one has the same thing twice. Okay, cool. Cool. Liver, right in. <laughs> yeah, liver. I mean, I, I like I said, my, my my grandma used to do liver and onions, and honestly, it was like little shriveled up Dr. Martin boots, and you bite into them, and it was like you needed a drink. Like every mouthful needed a drink, and it was like <laughs> iron rich, dry, corrugated cardboard. Ah, oh, I mean, the the woman used to like start the oven at like eight in the morning and finish at one in the afternoon. I mean, it was <laughs> it was bad. She was a culinary disaster, bless her heart. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything else that we haven't discussed today that you kind of wanted to, to bring to the table? You know, barbecues yeah. that we all own, what we all cook on, 
what we will enjoy doing, um, what kind of vibe have we got, what are you cooking during through the year? Barbecue season, people say, barbecue season's over. No. My barbecue season started like October. Cold smoking. There's all that going on. So basically, we, we're talking about hot stuff. But what about the time when it's cold outside, you need to start a cold smoke generator and smoke cheese, nuts. Um, you mentioned the other day you do, you're, you're well into pork belly. Yeah. So why yeah. can't you cure some pork belly for, for a week in your fridge and then take it outside and smoke it and then let it equalise and back wrap it and then you've got your most awesome bacon you've ever had in your life. We have not even scratched the surface of this stuff right now. This could be uh, the longest no. podcast you guys have ever done. Hey, we can, we've split them in two before and we can do it again. Talk, talk have us you? Through, yeah, talk us through your kit. Talk us through your kit. Uh, so I started off with the Kadai. Um, that was my first love. And one of the first things I did on the Kadai was actually pork ribs. Yeah. So people talk about the 3 two, one method. My pork ribs actually sat on a swinging rack above some charcoal embers. And they actually cooked fairly quickly, I think within about five hours from start to finish, turning them over. And we sat there, my daughter and my dad, and we had pork ribs. And they were awesome. They were absolutely fantastic. And then I discovered smoking. So I bought a Pro Q. I bought the Pro Q and I struggled with that thing. So basically, I, I did it over the winter. And, you know, you, you'd be doing cooks and these things would be taking so long because the temperatures would be fluctuating up and down. And yeah. it was almost a baptism of fire. It was like you learned the hard way. Then I got to January and, um, there was a company called, um, well, they're now Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. But the original, Sean, the original guy, did the, uh, the Hammer Forge. Yeah. They did a giveaway. And the giveaway was basically, it was if you won it, you had to ship it over from Canada. And I saw the Hammer Forge and I was like, holy shit. And everyone <laughs> said, if there was ever a, a, a smoker, the Gorilla Gorilla needs in his life, it's the Hammer Forge. And I was sitting there and I was like, love hearts for eyes. I was like, oh my God, this thing is like, I love it. And then next one though is, I used to be part of the, um, the Sizzle Show. Yes, so I used to do yeah. reviews on hardware. And I remember doing the, um, the November Black Friday deals. And there was this barbecue company um, called SoCal Barbecue. And I'd never heard of them. Now to me, SoCal is Southern California. My guitars that I've got upstairs, they're SoCal's. And it was all, all that sort of basis of that sort of stuff. And I'd never heard of these guys. But I went on their page, looked at their hardware and what have you. We did a round of the Black Friday deals, uh, Riverside, SoCal, Alton's, a few other places. Can't remember them. And I was like, I've never heard of SoCal. Next to this guy called Charles comes up to me and goes, I've looked at your account. He goes, you want a hammer forge? And I went, yeah. He goes, I'm bringing them into the country. And I was like, really? And he went, yeah, they'll be here in January. I went, put me down for one. And he goes, do you want to know how much they are? I went, don't care. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know when you've seen something and you think, I need it. Yeah. I've got to have it. That is it. And um, Charles got in contact with two, two weeks later and goes, uh, Will, Will's got one. Will's Grills Jack. Uh, he's done a video on it and, and what have you have a look, see what you think. And I watched Will's video and I was like, yeah, I want that. You, you're, you're, you're not putting me off it. You're, you're making me want it more. And uh, Charles said, I'll, I'll send you one. So he sent me one. I sent him the money. It comes through. I put it in my garden and it fucking rained for two weeks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I sit down. I never mean, forget Charles going to Will uh, on a people go, Grilla Grilla's got one of these, but I've not seen him use it yet. And it's like, mate, the garden is like a quagmire. And I never forget the garden <laughs> stopped it. And um, I cooked on it and I fell in love straight away. So then I've got the Kazai, I've got the Pro Q, I've got the Hammer Forge. Then they did the Angus Oink, the Hung I Am Hungry Oink videos. Yes. I don't yeah. know if you guys saw them. I did. Hang and on. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out that um, it was done with the Birch Chef project. And basically, I won that. 
Now, I didn't think I was allowed to win it because I was a, an ambassador. But basically, is I won that. So I got my first ever Weber barbecue. Nice. And I realised that if anyone ever turns around to me and says, I want a barbecue, what should I get? Get a Weber. 57. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's I've got the bare minimum Weber. There's no ass catcher or nothing like that on it. That is your Swiss army knife of barbecue all day long. You cannot go wrong with them. You can smoke on it. You can high grill on it. You can low and slow on it. You can sear on it. it, 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 it it's all things to all men and ladies. No prejudice. <laughs> then, um, <laughs> Why did you sound like Elvis when you said that? <laughs> Are you a rod? Um, <laughs> so, so, so basically, um, I then got made an ambassador for 45 barbecues. So I went on to um, Ready Steady Barbecue that they were doing. And that, that, was the, that was the closest I've come to crying as an adult. So I went over there. The 45 barbecues guys, they, they welcomed me in. I went up against this, this guy, uh, a chef called Gareth. And I cooked this meal. My little one was with me. They all voted, the public voted and what have you. And they said, um, you've won. I was like, fantastic, I'm happy with that. And they went, turn around. And I turned around and there was a 45 barbecue lacquered with the Gorilla Gorilla logo on. And oh, went, wow. What? I, I didn't understand what was going on. And I went, uh, I, I don't get it. And everyone was like patting me on the shoulder. And my eyes started actually filling up that like, and it was on Instagram and all I could see was people going congratulations all this stuff going on. and I was like what the hell is going on I'm just a guy that just cooks some crap in his garden and doesn't set fire to it and I'm getting this and I'm being given this and I, 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 and to this day I still don't get it I still don't get it at all um, then uh, I got a I won. Uh, Smoking Maple Meats did a competition with Alton's, and I won a Weber Go Anywhere. <laughs> Lovely little bit of kit. Absolutely mm. awesome little thing. Then somebody offered me a Kamado Kettle Joe. Yes, yeah. In the box. What a bit of kit that is. Uh, and then also I got offered a Kamado Joe Jr., uh, in the box and I went and bought that as well and so basically I've got a whole spectrum of things in my garden to cook on and uh, every single one of them gets used within a couple of weeks of each other I've always got something to cook on it so as far as kit goes yeah Amazing. I'm sport for Joyce I, I love it I'm like, you know what I can't part with any of them they've all got a special place in my heart they've all got a, a place to serve as far as I'm concerned couldn't agree more. There we yeah. go. Yeah, Owen, with the, with with a similar number of barbecues, you definitely couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am starting to get the the twitch about what to get next. So, what are you? What are you sort of like? Where are your leanings going to then? So the the, the two areas are to get an offset or a fire cage. I think for you, a fire cage would pay. Yeah, I've, I've been, I've been saying it for probably about a year to this Neil, and what I actually did is the money that I had for a fire cage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I want a savage fire cage, and what happened was I got a little bit tipsy at Sizzle Fest <laughs> last year. <laughs> And, ended up walking, and I ended up walking away with a Traeger 885. <laughs> so, the money, like, yeah. so the money I had, I could have put for a fire cage, I spent on a uh, Traeger. So I'm just, I'm just is, building up the coffers it, again. thing is, it's like a Traeger. You can put it on side and like, like wang a grey big fat brisket on that, right? It does its thing. But then you've got your fire cage there. You can hang things. You can put things in like a little chamber. You can do poppers. You can do all sorts on there. Close, high, low, middle, left, right, up, down, whatever you like. So whilst your Traeger at six o'clock in the morning is taking care of the brisket duties and you've got your friends and family around, you could be like wielding a fire cage and you can be cooking six or seven things on there. 
So, uh, or an offset smoker, which is going to be doing pretty much what your Traeger's doing. But taking... Yeah, I suppose it's more just a fire, it's just a fire management. Believe it or not, I've, I've done one, I've done one piece of brisket on the Traeger. Didn't, didn't enjoy it. I actually prefer cooking on my uh, Smoky Mountain or the Royal King Keg. I prefer cooking brisket. For yeah. me, the main thing, the main thing I use my Traeger for, believe it or not, is cooking an English breakfast. <laughs> right okay so hash browns bacon eggs sausages black pudding i get two i get a couple of pans and i put the pans in there and i crack the eggs in and use that that's yeah. the main thing or just midweek quick cooks i, I very re- i very 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 rarely do anything low and slow my traeger i just i can't seem to get the bark or the smoke ring i'd rather just put it straight on the you know i'd rather put it in the smoky mountain the broken keg or the kettle where I know I'm going to get the bark. I know I'm going to get I, the smoke ring. I think I think that's the case of like you, you know where your comfort zone is, don't you? You know where mm-hmm. you're going to get your best results. Some of it. I mean, there, there's no denying you can get a smoke profile on these things. Where you get these people say, "Oh, you can't get a smoke ring on a Traeger." Yeah, you can all day long. It just you just got to know what you're doing. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Gaz. He's a big Traeger proponent. Uh, I mean, he he produces fantastic results on it. But other people that do really well in the Traegers, you know, like, uh, let's cook for people. Yeah. You know, she, she's a, a great Traeger proponent. So, yeah, Kirsty's a legend. Oh, Kirsty's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I mean, since the first this year, she was, she was like, you know, she was a delight to be around, you know. Yeah. So what, what I'm saying to people there, there is, is that even though you're not comfortable with doing what you're doing, you have your area where you are definitely comfortable in. So, so stay in that zone. You know yeah. you can produce good results in that area, but then don't let that kit do nothing. Do that kit do something else. So if you've got family coming around and you say, I do a great breakfast on that, that's where you start. That's where they get their breakfast. You get their breakfast on the Traeger whilst your Weber Smoky Mountain is sitting there doing a brisket, which you started at, you may say six in the morning, I say three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you know, when people say I get up at six in the morning, it's like no, you're three hours too late. Yeah, get up at, yeah, definitely. Get up at three in the morning, right? If you can get it going or what have you. It's only an hour to get things going. Go back to bed. You can wake up at six and double check things, yeah, mm-hmm. especially if you're not ruining any tech and what have you. But then when you get people coming round, you can do stuff on the Traeger there. So horses for courses. Yeah, absolutely. Each, absolutely. each bit of kit has got its own niche element, so it's not necessarily the worst thing but it can be better at doing other stuff. Thank you so much for spending the time to speak to us today as well. It's been great. I'm sure we'll talk to you again on the podcast, but one last time. Always welcome. Gorilla Gorilla, find him on Instagram. Neil, you've been great. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you guys again. That's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast. Thanks to Neil for coming on. It was a fantastic to talk to Neil and discover more about his journey, his love for Angus and Oink. Um, and we you know, very much look forward to catching up with Neil again. Um, as ever, we want to hear from you. We want to find out what you want to talk about. So please get in touch with us uh, through our website, social channels. Um, also, we've got the the affiliate partners that we're working with, the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast merchandise that we've got. Uh, And until next time, keep on grilling. Today's episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast is brought to you by AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.